Good morning, modern steaders. This morning's chores are a little bittersweet. We don't have the pigs anymore. We harvested them this past weekend and they're in the freezer, so we'll be eating good this winter and eating good, nourishing food all winter long. But we don't have the pigs. What do you think there, Blossom? Good morning. You girls want some chaff hay? One of the things we're already missing about the pigs is their ability to turn any food scrap into meat. There's no waste on your homestead farm when you have pigs around. The food scraps that we have now, say like potato peelings, carrot peelings, stuff like that, we give to the chickens and they eat it, but they don't do as good of a job as the pigs do. The pigs, it would all be gone. Our chickens are a little bit fussier. We'll get more piglets come next spring. We're not gonna raise any through the winter. We have plenty of meat right now. We plan on having Willow bred any time now. We're waiting for her to go into heat. We've been keeping eye on signs of that. So if we go too early with getting her bred, she'll have the babies when it's still pretty cold out here. So if we wait till now, end of October, November, She'll have them um, April, May, and that'll be good timing with our weather. Did you get it all? Make sure you get every last bit. You come out this way. There's nothing in there. Nope. What are you doing? Your ears all messed up there, Pluto. Do you care? Huh? Do you care? Nope. This way. The pigs are eating all that. The chickens kind of leave it a little messy. I was planning on moving New York City this week, picking up the turkey tractors, the chicken tractors, taking down the pig fence, and just cleaning up and getting ready for winter. But it's supposed to rain every day this week, except for today. So I'm trying to figure out, priority-wise, what's the best way to go about it so we can have stuff to do during the rain. If I spend today all day doing some projects, and not getting prepared for the rain. I won't have anything to do on the rainy days. So I need to figure out the best course of action. <laughs> We've been having so much rain here this year, it's not even funny. <sighs> I sound like a broken record and I keep saying that, but when you're outside trying to get stuff done and it's raining, it's hard. Come on. This way. Blow it out. This cat cracks me up. If I get this down, I can get in here with the excavator, even if it's raining out one day, and start getting a rough grade in some of the stumps dug out. I wanna get this area smoothed up and remove the stumps, and then come next spring, we can get some grass in here growing. 
there's some jobs that just aren't that exciting on the farm and this is one of them but i find i'm better off picking it up right away and not putting it off plus this year i want to get in here with the excavator i've cleaned this all up in the past and there's a bunch of small tree stumps so i want to get in here with the excavator while we still have it and before winter hits and clean that up Not the most exciting job. Once I have the wire all reeled up, we'll be back. I won't make you guys sit through this. All right. There. That'll work. I really need... Log. I figured while I was out picking up the pig pasture, I wanted to take an extra five minutes and pick up the poultry netting that we had around the turkey track for them and get that put away before the ground starts to freeze up or we get too much snow out on the pasture. And they have rope on them so you can tie them up and store them nice and neat you need them again. Today I guess we're going to be doing a bunch of winter preps. Our friend Morgan from Goldshaw Farm came over last, not last weekend, two weekends ago I'll put a link to that video right here. He brought over some buttercup, buttercup. He brought over some butternut trees, some chestnut trees, and an elderberry bush. And today, we're gonna be putting tree tubes around them. This is something that Morgan uses and had. If you guys wanna find out more information about these, I'll put a link that video right here that Morgan did. They're plastic and they're 95% translucent. So they let the light through. They keep the dares from eating them. And they're gonna keep me from mowing them with the Kubota. And also they should help with the voles and the mice. But Morgan has an awesome video on these that you can check out. I have about a 12 to 18 inch tall chestnut right here. Got a six foot tall scrape stake. The thing is, I know this project needs to get done before the ground freezes. Winter is coming. We have lots of stuff we need to take care of before we can. I'm gonna put that pipe to the ground. I'm gonna put the bark, I'm gonna put my wood chips right up to it to keep the voles out. I got zip ties on them so they slide over the post. The tubes come in different widths, it looks like, so I'm saving the wider ones for my bushier trees. Down to the wood chips, back to it a smidge, and I just gotta.
the really neat part about all these is my neighbors didn't think I was weird already. They were driving by and going, what is he doing with all this PVC pipe now? So, but now I'll know where they are and I won't mow them over with the Kubota. These are a really awesome idea. I like them. It's going to get like the greenhouse effect too because it's going to heat up. So it's going to actually help our growing, extend the growing season a little bit. When we put in a new apple orchard, I'm going to do this. I wonder what Gina and Olivia will say about them when they get home tonight. We'll find out. Looks to me like a chipmunk or a squirrel has found a nice little perch to eat an apple on. He better not let Figaro catch him. Or maybe Figaro did catch him, that's why the apple's not finished. Uh oh. Ugh, I so just want to get in that excavator and start working. But I think today, while it's not raining, I'm better off cutting a bunch of trees down, getting them stacked up in a brush pile. And then when it's raining, I could be in here working, pulling stumps and smoothing it out. You don't know how hard it is to keep myself from getting in that excavator. <laughs> I guess we gotta go get the excavator and push it over. Man! The top's getting hung up. No, the excavator's not mine. We're using it probably till about Thanksgiving. We traded work for the excavator. So that's why it's hard not to be using it all the time. But we gotta cut some more brush. <laughs> I cut into this tree because I thought it was ash and it is ash but I was hoping it was a maple tree because I was gonna leave it it's a good sized tree we got a maple there that's a maple also so I'm trying to save if I can in some locations maple trees there's one right here we're gonna save and there's a few over there I'll let them get bigger and grow up so the ash is coming down. There's another nice maple over there that I saved. We just can't have them too close together to each other. <laughs>
I don't know what happened, but I thought I had some awesome GoPro footage, but for some reason, either it didn't record or something happened with the memory card. So for right now, we're just gonna hop into the house and start cooking dinner. Gina made a big old batch of home fries this weekend. So we're gonna have breakfast tonight for dinner. Sausage patties. One of my favorite foods to cook for the second time in reheat is home fries. I just think for some reason they come out tasting so much better the second time around. This dinner was so good. We had fresh pork from the pigs we raised, home fries, and eggs from New York City. This is what it's all about. I wanted to thank all y'all for coming along on our journey with us as we build our farm life. And I want to encourage you guys to go on and try growing as much as your own food as you can. The quality, the taste is just so different than store bought and it's just so satisfying when you sit down and eat a meal at the end of the night knowing that it came from your land with your hard work.